Well, friends, I'm back again, uh, and I have a scripture for us that I want us to share together. We are going to be memorizing some scriptures together because the word is the plumb line. You know, what is a plumb line? A plumb line is the weight that uh, builders put on a string that shows them what true north, south, look, what, what a true vertical line is so that they don't build things crooked. It, it keeps them straight, keeps their lines straight. Um, and so the word is our plumb line. The plumb line keeps us from building our lives crooked. It keeps us straight. It keeps us moving in the right direction. It keeps us from being deceived and going astray one way or another. And so the word is truth, and we hold fast that the word is truth. It is Jesus says in John chapter 1 that he is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And so we know that Jesus is the word. And so when we hold fast to the word, we're holding fast to Jesus himself. Because he is the truth of God, the light that is the life of men. And so um, we are going to spend some time uh, memorizing some scripture, some scriptures, some essential scriptures, I think, that uh, um, every Christian should know. Some things that we ought to know in our hearts. That these are the things that are foundational for God to begin to speak to us and work in us. And so um, let's memorize some scriptures together. I would encourage you to get a Bible. I would encourage you to look them up. I find it easier to memorize scriptures where my eyes have actually seen the word, sometimes even where the word is on a page in my Bible. It's, it's helpful for me. But together, we're going to uh, memorize some scripture. Um, the other thing I would say to you is memorizing the whole scripture sometimes is a process. Uh, I'm not really good at memorizing. I can memorize small parts, but the whole big scriptures, I get lost in them, I'll forget the whole thing. So when I find a scripture that speaks to my heart that I feel like God is directing me in, something that either convicts me or something that God reveals to me is something he wants to do in me, I'll take that scripture and the portion of that scripture that most speaks to me, I will memorize and speak over and over and over again. And I'll force myself, I will choose to many times during the day to repeat that over and over again till it becomes a part of me. And then I may go back to that scripture and add the rest of it to it because some scripture is just too long for me to get the whole thing. Um, people memorize in different ways. Now, I got uh, daughters that can memorize entire movies in one sitting. Now, they, they're better at it than I am but I'm not a great memorizer personally. Whatever suits you best, but I would encourage you, especially those parts that kind of weigh in your spirit, that you can sense that the Holy Spirit is, is revealing to you, that, that when you read it, it does something inside of your heart. Those sections of scripture memorize first and then build the scripture around it. The scripture that I have for you today, the first scripture we're gonna memorize together, I think is, 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 is key, so very key for you to be, for you to live a life with God. Um, and so um, I picked this, I didn't pick this. I do believe, I strongly believe that the Holy Spirit, is, as a matter of fact, many things in my mind are telling me, Mark, there's more foundational scriptures that more laid out the doctrine of Christ than this scripture right here. But I feel like God put this on my heart for you. And so I want us to memorize this scripture together and it is foundational. I'll tell you a little story. There's a lady that I know that was a principal friend of mine. Her name is Carla. Um, Carla is a principal actually right now in the district I used to be in. And um, she, at one point she and I worked together. Um, I actually hired Carla and she became a kindergarten teacher for me uh, back um, in the day when I was first principal, early days of being a principal. And she um, raised up, got leadership jobs, and before long she was my assistant principal. And when I left that school to go to another school, Carla became the principal of that school. Uh, I love Carla, I love her dearly. She is a true woman of God. Uh, she always had worship music playing in her office. She, she, she is one that I could go to, and I, we had a relationship such that we trusted each other enough that Carla could tell me um, exactly what she thought without worrying how I would take it. And so I would go to Carla and ask her questions and, and, and she knows that what I want is a true, honest response back from her. And we were sitting in a meeting. We, we had a meeting with a parent. The parent was late. 
And so we were sitting in uh, the counselor's office actually waiting for the parent to come. Um, and I, uh, Carla asked me some question. I said, I'll tell you what, Carla, it is so easy for me to have faith for other people. I can pronounce God's word on other people and I know God's gonna hear it and I know he's gonna answer my prayers for others, but I don't always believe, or I struggle sometimes believing that he has the same compassion for me and that he will answer the prayers that I ask over myself. I struggle in that way. Uh, and I asked Carla, I said, do you struggle with that? She says, no, honestly, I don't. She says, I know of the love of God for me. She said, it's been a process in understanding that, but I know of God's love for me. And so I'm able to stand in confidence with him. Um, and so this is something I grabbed in, uh, in, in my heart. It says, God wants me to stand in confidence with him. He doesn't just want me to be an intercessor to be able to stand in the gap and believe for other people. He wants me to believe for myself. He wants me to know that he wants to help me. And what that is really, guys, is believing in his love. You know, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that tell you, if you can just believe, if you can just believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him has eternal life. So if you will believe, trust, and rely on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can have eternal life. Now look, I know there's doctrines out there that will tell you you got to do certain things and then even when you die, you got to hope that maybe God will have enough mercy on you to make it into heaven. That's not what the word says. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Lord meaning he's our master, he's our savior, he's our king, he's the one that rules our life. If we believe in him, but I'm gonna tell you, it's awfully hard to believe in someone if you don't know they love you. And so my very first, did I say that too fast? I want you to believe and rely on the Lord Jesus Christ so that you will have eternal life. Not that you will go into some paradise and, and have to wrestle around for a while that someday maybe God will let you in. That's not, that's not scripture. Scripture says if you believe, you have eternal life. Not only that, you don't have to wait to have eternal life. He that believes, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish. Hear that. If you believe in Jesus, you won't perish and you have everlasting life. Bam, it's scripture. It's either the truth or you believe the doctrine of men. Now, we just talked about that. You're either going to believe the Bible is true or you're going to believe the doctrine of men. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved meaning you're not going to perish. You will have eternal life. God has a place for you in heaven. Um, the struggle we have with that is, does God love us that much? Now, we can look at our mamas and say, well, God loves my mama that much. We can look at our brothers and sisters. We can look at our friends. Yeah, God loves them. But you have to know God loves you. So the belief, the thing that hinders our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ is the doubt that we have because we see our filth we see our unworthiness. We, we have a hard time loving ourselves, so we question whether or not God can love us like that. But God is love. First uh, John is full of scriptures that talk about God's love. I want to memorize one with you. I want to go to First John. I'm going to read a couple of these scriptures, but First John chapter 4, verse 18. First John, not the Gospel of John, the Epistle of John. It's in the very back of the Bible, close to Revelation. For, very back of the Bible. First John 4, 18. First John 4, 18. First John 4, 18. It's what? First John 4, 18. Can you say that with me again? First John 4, 18. I want you to find that, read that. I want your eyeballs to see the scripture. Read that because uh, it's, it's going to bless you. If you can get this in your heart, if you can get this in your spirit, if you can continue to confess this and get this down in your heart, it will change your life. It'll change your perspective. Life is so different when you know God loves you than if you're toiling and toiling, toiling and begging God to, to somehow have mercy on you. He's had mercy on you. He sent Jesus to the cross. He has demonstrated his mercy for you. He already loves you. His love is... is, is his love never fails. His love can never fail you. You can't send it away. He loves you. God loves you. So let's, let's look at this scripture. I want to read. I want to read just a couple of these scriptures here. I'm going to start in 1 John chapter 4, and I'm going to go 
to verse number 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in, in love dwells in God, and God dwells in him. Herein is our love made perfect. Please hear verse number 17. It's not the one we're memorizing, but I want you to hear this. This is how our love is made complete. Herein is our love made perfect. Our love is made complete. In that our love is made complete so that in the day of judgment we may have assurance. God is made complete in us, so oh please hear this, that on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, on the day when you pass over from this life to the next, on that day of judgment, you can have assurance. You won't be worried, you won't be begging, you won't be hoping. You know, herein is our love made complete, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. As Jesus is, so are we in the world because we live in him. Listen to verse number 18. There's no fear in love. I want you to memorize this, my friends. There is no fear in love. I have seen so many Christians, so many Christians in this day, the vast majority of Christians, most all Christians on the earth today, those who call themselves Christians, oh, I believe they are Christians, have fear. They fear they worry, they strive, they beg, they, they crawl, they, 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 they feel like they can't come into the presence of God. They, they fear God, but there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. You know, if, if I, I've got a dog running around this yard somewhere. I love that dog. I don't want that dog to be afraid of me. A perfect love will cast fear. That dog's not afraid of me at all. Will come right up to me because I love that dog. That dog knows I love him and, my, and love casts fear away. That dog doesn't have to be afraid of me. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I would hope that's the case with my children and my grandchildren and the people that I love, that they know they don't have to fear because love casts out fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has because of fear of punishment. He that fears is, is not made perfect in love. What is the fear that we have? The fear that we have is the fear of punishment, is what it says here. Um, but he that feareth, if you're fearing, you're not made perfect in love. So if you're afraid, my friends, if you're afraid, um, you, you are not um, seeing yourself in God's love. Let me look in, in, in another translation. Let me look at this in one more translation, my friends. Translations are another thing, friends. I would encourage you, you know, the, the, the Bible app, you can get the Bible app on your phone. And the Bible app has many translations. So if you don't fully understand a scripture in one, you can move into another translation and read it another way till you find the way that really that, that God really kind of speaks to your heart in it. Um, translations are tricky things. Uh, I'm at a school right now where I absolutely do not like the translation of the Bible. It's so many so much of the scripture is watered down to try to make kids understand it, I guess, but they don't really speak the power of the word in those translations. I don't like it. So I go to other ones and I'll read other translations. I would encourage you to do that too. Um, remember that the original truth was written Hebrew in the Old Testament, Greek in the New Testament. We can come back to those words, those words best define for us what God was saying. First John four eighteen. there is no fear in love, but Perfect love drives out fear. Hear this. I, I, I like this, and this is the one I want us to memorize. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Who is God? God is love. God loves you. And if you understand God's love for you, God's love will drive fear out of you because you know that he's all-powerful, he's almighty, um, and, and God loves you. He is going to take care of you. You have no fear of punishment in him. There is no fear at all in you because God's love drives fear out of your life. If you're ever afraid, let your mind be renewed to understand God's love for you. If you understand God's love for you, you'll never be afraid. Wow, that's powerful. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. 
The one who fears is not made perfect in love. This is the New International Version, the NIV. Um, you might want to go, you can even Google this, this 1 John 4.18 NIV, and it'll come out in this scripture right here, I think makes it easier to understand. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears, you're not made perfect in love. Fear fears punishment. If you understand God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you're not going to perish, but you're going to have everlasting life. If you believe God's love for you puts you under the hedge of protection, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the mighty, Almighty. If you understand no weapon formed or tongue that would rise against you in judgment, this is your heritage because God loves you. He puts a hedge of protection about you. He covers you with his protection. There's nothing, there is no fear no evil can befall you, Psalm 91. No plague can come near you. He gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. If you understand God's love for you and his faithfulness to you, if you understand love, you will not have fear in your heart. If you ever fear, it's because you're not trusting him and you're not trusting in his love. God's got you. God's got you. And everything you go through, God's got you. It may seem like circumstances are completely turned uh, against you, but the Bible says he works everything for your good. Sometimes we don't see it today, but over time you'll be able to say, wow, I'm glad that happened to me because God used that for this to happen. If you can just trust in him, rest in him, not be anxious in him, you should never fear because perfect love, and God is perfect love, perfect love casts out all fear. I want you to know this in your heart. So many of us can't find God. We can't hear God. We can't reach God because we're too afraid of God. We're too afraid. Uh, we don't trust in God's love, and so we don't see God's love for us, and it keeps us from walking in him, accepting him, and, and, and moving uh, by his spirit. We're spending too much time afraid of him. I don't want you to be afraid of God. God doesn't want you to be afraid of him. God is love, and perfect love casts out fear. If you're in fear, you're not in God. 1 John 4, 18. If you're in fear, change your mind, accept God's love, trust him, and walk in grace, not in fear. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. So God's love will drive fear out of you. Isn't that awesome? Because fear has to do with punishment. But we don't worry about punishment because we are in grace. We're God's children. We're the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. There is no fear. We're not afraid of God's punishment. Jesus paid the price for us already. The punishment's been paid. We live in grace. And that perfect love casts out the fear of punishment. Oh, what a God we serve. What a God we serve. Don't let the devil teach you a message that steers you away from God's love and makes you feel like you're going to be punished, that makes you feel like he's not going to accept you, that makes you feel like you don't have eternal life, that makes you feel like somehow you have to struggle and beg him for what he's already promised you. God, Jesus paid the price for us, brothers and sisters. You are righteous in his sight. Righteous in his sight, rest in him. His love drives out all fear, and he will take care of every aspect of your life. He's got you. He's got you. So let's memorize this. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. But the one who fears, if you're afraid, you're not made perfect in love. So let us not fear, brothers. And I love this. Verse number 19 says, we love because he first loved us. Why do I love you? Those of you who know me, many of you who have joined this network, um, joined this network, uh, maybe because you know how much I love you. You know how much I care about you. This love that I have, I have because I have love for you because God loved me. And because God loves me, he gives me this capacity in my heart to love you. Not only to love you, but to understand 1 John 4, 18, to know that his love casts fear out of your life. And I trust God's love to cast fear out of your life just as he has mine. Amen. What a precious God we serve, my friends. This is a glorious life, not one that we should toil in, not one that we should be beggars of. God hadn't made us beggars. He's made us children. 
He's made us his children. We are the righteousness of God through Christ. We'll learn that scripture later. 1 John 4, 18, one more time. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now, if it was me, and on this side of the camera, it is me. First of all, memorize the part that God speaks to your heart. If this part of the scripture speaks to your heart, you memorize that part and then work the rest of it later. For me, the part that speaks to me most is the very beginning of the scripture that says there is no fear in love. If I understand there's no fear in love, when I have fear in me, I'm, I know I'm not trusting in God's love and I'm going to come back and get my mind right. Remember how the Satan sends thoughts into your mind? God doesn't love you. Look how terrible you are. God doesn't care about you. Who would care about you? God, anybody who knows you is not going to feel this way. But those messages of Satan will come into your ears and before long, you'll be afraid and you'll think terrible things are going to happen to you or whatever the case may be. Why? because you're not trusting in God's love because there's no fear in his love. If you ever have fear, worry, anxiety in you, then you're not relying on God's love. You're relying on your perception of yourself. You're relying on the lie of Satan that nobody could ever love you like that. And that is not the truth. The truth is that God is love and he loves you so much he gave his son to die for you and made you a heir with Christ, a joint heir with Jesus. You are Jesus' brother and sister. You, my friends, are a child of God. What a glorious thing. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. That's what I would memorize. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is, is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. First John 4, 18. Let me encourage you to memorize that, brothers and sisters. Say it to yourself many times today. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. There is no fear in love because perfect love drives out fear. There's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out, drives out fear. There is no fear in love, but love is like light. It's like light chases darkness away. Love, phew, fear's got to go. Love, phew, fear's got to go. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Memorize that, brothers and sisters. I believe it'll change your life. I do believe it'll change your life, and it's foundational in the way that we see God. If we don't see God as love and loving us, then we're not seeing God clearly. How can we follow him? How can we trust him? How can we believe in him? How can we go farther than this? if we don't accept his love. Amen? So memorize the scripture. Let it come into your heart. Know without a shadow of a doubt how much God loves you. There's a scripture. We'll learn this later too. Thank you, Jesus. Paul prays and he says, I pray that the, the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened so that you could understand the depths of God's love for you. And, and that's my prayer for you too. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you could just see how much it is that God loves you. Um, and may these scriptures drive you to that place. God loves you. I love you, brothers and sisters, but more than that, I don't even come close to how much God loves you. He sees you, he sees all of you, and he loves you. And the parts that are his are weak in you. You say, God, yeah, I don't want you to see this. God, I'm not good at this. I'm weak in this area. God wants you to be proud of it because the Bible says that he uses our weaknesses. His grace fills our weaknesses and his glory is demonstrated in the areas that we're weak. So even in the areas where we're weak, we're glory in God, knowing that perfect love casts out fear. And God's love fulfills all that he created for us to be. What a glorious God. What a glorious God. First John 4, 18. Will you memorize that with me? I'll give you some time and we'll memorize this together and I'll come back with another scripture soon. Father, bless the hearts of these, your, your, your people. Bless them, Father, and help them, Father, to be raised in newness of life by the power of your spirit and by the power of your word. We love you. Remember, my brothers and sisters, you are doubly anointed. You are that Elisha generation.